Hey folks, I'm Steve Butler. This modern room divider is guaranteed to screen off any area you desire, yet it still lets light and air pass through, creating a sense of openness. Come see how we do it here in the garage. The beauty of today's project is that you can easily modify it to suit your needs. We're using 3 quarter inch off the shelf pine. You can use any material you prefer. We have three panels. Each panel is made up of two styles, two rails, and running the length of each panel are these 3 quarter inch vertical slats joined together by these 3 inch spacers. And it's all tied together by lap joints, glue, brad nails, and these double action hinges. First thing we need to do is cut our parts to size. I work in a small shop space, so at times I like to cut my pieces down to a more manageable or workable size. In this case, I'm gonna cut them at 74 inches, which is the longest piece we need. Now, before we get started, make sure you're wearing hearing protection and safety glasses. All right, I'm just going to put their off cuts aside. We're going to use them later. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other boards. Yeah, I love the simplicity of this project. I saw it in a book. It seems like a thousand years ago, and I just thought it'd be a great project for the show. You can change it up if you want. You can add it on. I, I did three panels, which is the minimum you want, so it'll stand properly on the floor. But if you have a larger space, you could add on, make it five or seven panels, whatever you like. Okay, I've set my table saw to an inch and three quarter inches wide, and I need to rip six pieces, those make up our styles, to that dimension. Now, you want to set the blade so it's about a quarter of an inch above your workpiece, and if you're not sure, you're in doubt, just the thickness of a pencil. Also, the general rule of thumb, if, if you're cut, the diff distance between the fence and the blade is greater than your fist, your hand, you don't need a push stick. In this case, we need a push stick. I have my safety glasses on, my hearing protection. Turn the dust collector on. We're ready to make our cut.
Now we need to cut two pieces at three and three quarter inches and they make the bottom rails for the outside panels. Now we need to cut 18 pieces at three quarters of an inch. And those are our vertical slats for the three panels. Now I've set my saw fence to three quarters of an inch, which is narrower than my fist. So we need to use a push stick, safety glasses and hearing protection on. Why pine? Yeah, I catch a lot of flack sometimes that I use pine for a lot of projects. The idea is I, I want to entice people to try woodworking. And so I use off-the-shelf material so it's accessible to people. I mean, if, if you have a lot of experience in woodworking, you can take this project idea and just use uh, whatever materials you like. Walnut, cherry, make it whatever wood you want. Um, but it's, you know, the, you need to learn the techniques first. If you're cutting a dovetail or learning how to cut a dovetail, it's the same technique, whether it be in walnut or other hardwood or off-the-shelf pine. So I use it kind of a, as a teaching tool. We've ripped all our pieces to width. Now it's time to cross-cut all our pieces to length. Now I've removed the miter gauge and I'm going to use this shop-made table saw sled and it really helps support longer pieces. Now I've also had to raise the blade a little bit to accommodate the thickness of the wood I'm using plus the thickness of the table saw in this case or the table saw sled, pardon me, in this case half an inch. Now the two outside panels are taller than the inside panel of our project so I now need to cut two styles to 72 inches long. Now I drew a pencil line and I'm going to bring that pencil line right up to the edge of my sled. I don't even have to measure because I know that's going to cut it off square. Okay, now I'm just going to go ahead and cut all our rails to 13 and 3 quarter inches long. That looks great. We're just gonna go ahead and cut our three quarter inch vertical slats to length. Okay, now we need to cut 18 pieces, our vertical slats, to 68 and a half inches. I'm gonna measure one and then I'm gonna use that as a template to measure all the others. Now again, I'm just using, drawing a pencil line and using the edge of the table saw sled as my reference point. We have all our vertical slats cut the length. Now we need to cut 42 three inch spacer blocks. 
Now, I'm working in a small shop space. Normally I work on the other side of the table saw, but I'm using my cutoff sled and I'm working on the right side of the table saw. So we need three inches as the end product. Our spacer blocks are three inches long. Because I'm on this side of the blade, I have to take into consideration that eighth inch thickness of the blade. So in this case, I'm using a sample piece as my measure and it's three and one eighth inches long. Just gonna flush it up to the end of my three quarter inch piece. I went ahead earlier and cut some extra three quarter inch pieces and I'm just gonna bring that up again to the edge of my sled and we'll do it. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut 42 of these. Yeah, I worked on the other side of the table saw using the sled. Just simply, I work in a small shop space, and until those longer pieces were cut down to more manageable sizes, um, that's what I had to do. Now that we have all our pieces cut to size, it's time to cut our joinery. Let me show you what I did. I took out our regular saw blade, and I replaced it with a set of stacked dado blades. And with the stacked dado blades, what it is is you have two blades on the outside. Think of a cookie. And the inside is a series of cutters that nestle together like this. And if you want a greater cut, greater width of a cut, you just add more cutters. Now, the reason I have the stacked dado blades in there is we're gonna use them to cut our lap joints. And the lap joints is the joinery we're using for the room divider. The styles and the rails are connected by these lap joints. And what it is, it's a notch. You take away half the thickness of the material you're using Make a cut so that it lays flush like that. And what I did, work, we need an inch and three quarters. And I'm measuring from the fence to the outside of the blade. And that's the width of our material we're using. You can see how that lays flush there. Now, I have our miter gauge. You always need to have your work supported. And I'm butting up our piece right up to the saw fence. That way I can't go past an inch and three quarters. I cannot make a mistake. Now, I, you need to have it supported. I'm gonna make one pass with that butted up against the fence until some materials move. And we're gonna make a series of cuts and I'm gonna keep making a cut, sliding it back, making it a cut until our entire lap joint is done. I'm gonna do that to all our styles and all our rails going to make our joint, turn it end for end, and do the same thing on the other end. Don't flip it over. It's easy to get confused, or you're going to end up with a lap joint facing up in one direction, facing down in the other. Okay, let's get going. First thing I want to do is make a test cut. I'm just going to slide this back and we're just going to nip away at it until the joint's cut. And I'm looking for that to be flushed. So in this case, I need to raise the blade a little bit just to take some more wood off. That feels great. Just gonna go ahead, cut all the ends on all our pieces. It 
If you don't have a set of dado blades, all the joinery could be achieved by doing multiple passes with a single blade on the table saw. Might take you a while, but it can be done. There we go. All the joinery for this project's cut. Now we're just going to go over to the bandsaw and cut the curve on the two outside bottom rails. Okay, we need to draw our curve on our two outside bottom rails. Now I make multiples of these room dividers, so I did a template. You could use a flexible ruler to make the curve. I'm just going to put this on here, make sure it's flush to the bottom, draw my line. It's easy to get confused, just going to make a mark where I want to cut. Now if the bandsaw, the same rule applies with the table saw. Why expose more blade than necessary? It's just dangerous. So we want about a quarter of an inch or the thickness of a pencil above your workpiece. Always you start the saw, you wait till it comes to full speed, and then we're going to make our cut. Then I'll just do the same thing for our other rail. Just take your time, nice and smooth. There we go. We'll do our other rail and then we'll go over to the drill press and sand that smooth. I've installed a little drum sander in our portable drill press. I'm just going to go ahead and sand those curves smooth. That looks great. All our parts are cut, sanded. We're just gonna go ahead and assemble our frames. Let me show you what I did. You don't have to do this, but if you're gonna make multiples of this, you might want to. I made a template to help me glue up. There's a lot of small parts with this and they need to line up precisely. So I went ahead and I cut a piece of plywood and I, I made sure it was square. This also helps keep the frame square. And it, I've located all these spacer blocks where I need them for my dividers. They help me place my three quarter inch dividers just perfectly in there. You can see how that fits nicely. Also, it helps me locate my three, three inch spacers. Now, first thing I want to do, I want to lay in my style. Now, I'm only doing one side of the panel first. I'll glue on the other rail. Um, pardon me, the other style after I've glued in all the, the center pieces, the vertical pieces and the spacers. I'm just going to put some glue on here. You don't need copious amounts, but you certainly don't want to starve the joint. Another thing I did is I put a coat of lacquer on my template. Um, before that, I wrote down all the directions, my cutting list. I sprayed it with lacquer and then some wax so the glue doesn't stick. I have a hole in this template. I hang it on the wall. And then I have it when I need it, when I want to make another panel. Or another room divider, pardon me. Okay, I'm just going to lay this out. Just going to fit our lap joints together. Make sure that's square. Nice. Just going to shoot a brad in to temporarily hold it in place. Line that up, and I'm just going to clamp it in place. There we go. Just going to lay in my vertical slats. 
goes in. And see how that fits. That's nice. You want to make sure they're down flush. a little adjustment and turn that over and if anything's too thick you can always run a hand plane across it afterwards the important thing is to make sure your vertical slats are butt up against the rail or else it'll throw everything off afterwards If you have to, you can clamp them in place. That's going to work. Now, I'm just going to glue in our three inch spacers. And we're simply using a butt joint or a rub joint. And we're going to sand these afterwards. So if you get some squeeze out, don't worry about it. We can plane them down, sand them down later. And we're just going to fit these in place. There we go. Do yourself a favor. Get a bunch of these little quick action clamps. They really help hold it in place if you have to. I'm just going to put that one in there until I glue the next one in place. You might have to fudge with these a little. That's why I have my, my little mallet. Just going to go along, fill in all the spacers. When it's dried, I'm going to turn it over end for end and do the same thing on the other side. You can see how that's coming together. Now my spacers blocks, the first ones are five and a quarter inches from my rail, from the inside of my rail. And then I have an inch and a half space between them where other spacers will go. All right, just want to make sure these are flush. Use a scrap block. Gonna put a clamp across here. Now you can see why I left that other style off. Gonna... You wanna make sure though that the clamp doesn't make these buckle up when you apply pressure. You wanna keep everything level. <clears throat> Excuse me. If there's any discrepancies afterwards, you can sand it down and plane it down if it's light. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and finish the next row of spacers. Fit right in there. I'll do the same thing. You can see how that's developing. That in there, in there. We'll go along till that row is complete. Let this dry, flip it over in the end, and do the same thing for that end. That looks great. Let me show you what I did. Both ends are equal spacing. For the center, I just drew a line right down the middle 
divided it on either side so I got an inch and a half spacing and then just put a three inch spacer block in there. Okay, now I just need to go ahead and glue up the two other panels. Yeah, you don't see too many room dividers uh, in use any, anymore. It does, they don't seem to be as popular. You used to see them all the time. I made one years ago when I was in university and uh, I had a studio apartment and it really helped partition or divide up the, the area. All right, that looks great. Now I went ahead and I glued up those two other panels. Once the glue dried, I sanded them and I just finished attaching these double action hinges. Now they mount to the edge of each panel and they simply just fold and they fold on both sides. That way you can set your divider up any way you like. Well, as usual, I had a blast building this project with you. I hope you come back and see us here in the garage. I work in a small shop. No, look at me. I was like, <laughs> I work in a small shop space. I've set my chop saw up. This is a lot to say. Hold on.